can make a good guess at how much water your soil holds, just knowing your soil texture and how deeply your crop is rooted. In the last video, we used BC's soil surveys to identify the soil layers under your fields and to estimate how much is gravel and rock. Here, we'll follow your crop's roots through these layers to add up how much water your soil can store. First, soil texture isn't everything. Organic matter, soil life, and a loose, crumbly structure all improve water storage. Over time, you can increase soil water storage with practices that reduce compaction and build humus. Effective strategies include cover crops, mulches, rotational grazing, reduced tillage, solid or liquid compost, and just about anything that encourages root growth, beneficial fungi, microbes, worms, dung beetles, and soil life in general. But you can't change your soil's texture, the mixture of sand, silt, and clay. And texture has the biggest water storage clout. For a basic irrigation schedule, some rules of thumb based on soil texture alone are good enough to estimate water storage. The coarsely textured, sandy soils across much of southeast BC drain very rapidly and can only store about one inch of water per foot of soil. Other areas have finely textured loams with silts and clays that drain slowly and can hold about two to two and a half inches of water per foot of soil. In the middle, most farms in BC's Kootenay and Boundary regions have sandy loams which can hold about one and a half inches of water per foot of soil. Many of us also farm on lots of coarse fragments, from small gravel to big rocks. Soil only stores water that clings to outside surfaces, and rocks have very little surface area relative to their large volume. If your soil is full of rocks, it can't store much water. For example, if you've got four feet deep of sandy loam. That would normally hold six inches of water. But if the soil is 70% coarse fragments, all that rock and gravel brings the stored water down closer to two inches. And your crop can't use all the water stored in a soil, not by a long shot. As the soil dries out, the remaining water is held tighter and tighter and it gets harder for the roots to suck up. The physics is complicated, but there's a simple rule of thumb. Most plants can easily access about 50% of the water stored in a soil, and 25% of a soil's water is stress-free. With sprinklers, we aim to stay above the easy access 50%. With drip irrigation, it's especially important to keep the soil moist, so we aim above the juicy, stress-free 25%. For certain plants, like peas, potatoes, tomatoes, and most tree fruit, we reduce those numbers to 40% and 20%, but the principle is the same. Just because there is water in the soil doesn't mean your plants can drink it. The amount of available water is also limited by how deep the crop's roots reach. So we look at all the layers the roots reach through and add up the water storage from each layer. Some roots may go down a long way, but for irrigation, we only consider effective roots that really fill out the soil. Most of the action is in the top layers, and we usually cap effective root depth at four feet. If you don't know how deep your crop's roots go, the best bet is to dig some holes to take a look. Do you have a hard pan that restricts roots? Then you'll have to irrigate to match the limited water storage in this shallow root system. This chart gives root depth estimates for typical plants grown in a good soil. A mature lettuce may root about 18 inches, while beans go down 2 feet, squash perhaps 3 feet, and field corn down to four feet. Depending on spacing and rootstock, fruit trees may go down between two and four feet. 
Let's say we're growing an alfalfa grass mix with effective roots down to four feet in Cranbrook with a Glencairn soil. The soil survey showed us we have the following layers. The top layer is eight inches of sandy loam with 40% gravel and rock. That holds about six tenths of an inch of water. The next layer down is 10 inches of sandy loam with 70% gravel and rock. That holds about four tenths of an inch of water. Good organic matter in these top layers might add about two tenths of an inch of water storage. The bottom layer takes us down to four feet. It's sand with 70% gravel and rock. That holds about eight tenths of an inch of water. When we add it all up, the total water storage of the soil is about two inches. But only half of that, one inch, is available to the crop. So, after we fully irrigate our soil, we know that about one inch of water is stored and ready for the plants to use. Now we know how much water our soil stores, we also know our limits to avoid overwatering. We've got a video that looks at the problem in detail, but the short story is, watering too much will leach your fertility, erode your profits, and might just run you off the farm. In the example we just did in Cranbrook, once the crop has lapped up that one inch of water, it's time to irrigate the full inch back into the soil. If you wait longer, the crop will get stressed. So, how long does it take for a crop to use up water? In the next video, we'll find a weather station near you and use it to figure out how much water your crop needs at any time of the season.